All right, what's up, Dragon Brood? I've been messing around for, I need to check the time, 14 or 15 hours, somewhere in there, and trying to figure out what the best version of Elves is to play. Because we've seen all different types of versions. We've seen people doing black and green. We've seen people do green and white. We've seen people do mono green. Maybe somewhere in the middle is what we're trying here, but I'm, it's I'm also trying a couple of different cards I haven't seen people play, and I think we might be onto something here. So let's hop into it, because some of these are going to be obvious, some of these are not. So we have Sentinel Stalwart. I think we have to play four of these because we need some access to some different colors and the mana ramp does matter even though it's not the most efficient thing. We do also have Llanowar Elves, no surprise there. We're playing three Get Lost. Now we don't have a ton of mana to support this and we'll, we'll talk about that in a second, but we have just enough and I think it's an important card to have. So we're gonna go ahead and play three of these. And then we have Leaf Crown Visionary, obviously pumps our team, makes sense. I'm going with Yavimai Iconoclast here. And I've seen a lot of people want to play the, the Dwinin's Elite that gives you an additional plus one plus one that's a 2-2. Two, two. I think that's a reasonable card, but here we wanted something that has a haste and just a little bit more power. So we have something to do after Sweepers, which I think is a big deal. We also have Werefox Bodyguard, which I think is pretty big for one, saving your best creature. Like if they decide to Sunfall, for example, you can actually blink out and say like, one of your bigger creatures if you need to and their life total is already low or you can just get something big out of the way if you want to be aggressive no surprise here we are going to be playing elvish archdruid i'm playing two copies of reclamation sage now if we were to go heavier on those maybe we don't need to get lost but get lost is still creature removal but i want to at least play a couple of these for a minute and see how we feel about them if we don't like them i will replace them with more tyvars because this is just another finisher right if we have five or six bodies out there and we have an Arch Druid. We just go ahead and pump this twice. The game's usually going to be over. We are going to play some Glissa Sunslayer because if you're going to play black, that's one of the main reasons, right? And this card's obviously good. I'm playing two Wilt Leaf Leash. And there's a lot of reasons here. One, that it's a 4-4 body so it can do stuff on its own. The color do make a difference here. And I'm going to talk about that here in a second with our lands. But additionally, this is a little bit of extra protection against discard decks. So if we can get one of those, that'd be awesome. Glissa, Herald of Predation, I like this as well, because it can give us extra creatures post-sweeper, right? So, on the turns it's out there, we just say, alright, let's just go ahead and keep Incubate, 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 till at some point they sweep the board. If not, then we just transform them and we attack, and that's just as good too. And then, this is a card I think a lot of people have slept on, but we're going to try two Banner of Kinship. Now, this list has something, I think, like 33 creatures. So even if we just get this on two or on three, that's going to be enough in a lot of cases to get the job done. Worst case scenario, your board gets swept and now everything you play after that is going to be bonus by a couple of points, which is a big deal, especially if you have haste creatures or something like that. So kind of interesting. We're going to see if it works because it's colorless. We shouldn't have a problem casting it. Now, again, when we're talking about lands being a thing here, I do want to point out we are going to try a couple of of creature lands again just a little bit of protection against sweepers don't know if it's necessary but we'll see could possibly go without the restless cottage and just go in on more restless prairie which is probably the answer we're going to settle on honestly but honestly let's just do that let's just do that because we're going to make sure we have more of the white while i'm thinking about it let's just go up on the restless prairie and then the blooming marsh we'll just turn these into forests because we don't it doesn't really matter that they're black mana because realistically we have eight things that can cast our two black creatures so let's just turn these into more forest and see what happens i'll probably regret this at the end of the day but you know what and let's go hushwood verge here there we go that'll better probably clean it up but having all these extra cavern souls and secluded courtyard should make it pretty easy for us to be able to cast all the things we need to you know i i think this could work i think this could work i think this is where we need to be so if you've been wanting to play elves and you want to play this build, at the end of the video, there'll be a link that takes you over to Moxfield, a channel sponsor, where we host all of our decks, where you can download them, you can play them in Arena. And then, maybe you want to build this in paper, or buy other foundation stuff. You can check out our friends over at Tales of Adventure. That's T-O-A-Magic.com. You can use code DRAGON, D-R-A-G-N, and you'll save 5% on everything you get on the website. doesn't have to even just be cards. You can get whatever. And you're supporting the channel, so that helps out a lot. But all right, let's go hop in and see if this is the best way to play elves. Okay, we have that, that, that. All right, sure, why not? We'll see if this works. Eh. 
And Lana Werelf is dead. I mean, you're not going to not use a cut down if you have it, right? You just hit us with it. I mean, maybe they also had a way, the one mana enchantment makes us discard or something. That's also possible. Alright. Deep Cavern Bat, that makes sense. I mean, you take the Get Loss, it's one of the few things I can cast. You either take that or the Iconoclast. And I kind of don't hate you taking either right now. <laughs> really? Alright, we found a land. I'm right on time. So we're going to go ahead and play this, and then just not attack so that we can leave up protection for Tybar. Because Tybar lets you tap another creature. I dare you to try to kill an opponent. Even though Tyvar has been around for a minute, I've had multiple people try to kill it. Now, if they have two kill spells here, like a cut down for our stalwart and whatever, okay, we can't do anything about that. He's got to take the beating. Like, that's just when you say, eh, tough life. Sucks to be us. Alrighty, then. We're going to go ahead and play this. It also could be smart if they, like, go for the throat our stalwart and then go for the throat Tybar on their turn. Like, I could see that being a thing, too. Oh. Opponent. I mean, I guess you're saving yourself some damage. But, all right. Cool. We'll take that. Hmm, blood letter. Annoying, but interesting. Uh, do we're probably just dead next turn, right? I mean, they just make us lose half our life, and the game's over. I mean, that's so much of what those decks are right now. Like mono blacks playing a bunch of that stuff, which is one of the reasons we want to have our get lost and things but looks like they have it nope maybe they don't they're looking at our creatures there was a weird pause like they were setting up and choosing what options they wanted on their spell but maybe not I mean it's also worth killing stalwart right now so I can't use Tybar's pump ability I'd have to draw an untapped land. Opponent? Maybe? Okay, I mean, I guess the good news is we're not insta-dead here. Right? Like, unless they're giving us the worst slow roll ever in the history of mankind. Okay. So they're going to draw three, lose... Or draw two, lose three. Okay, tiny bones, sure. That makes sense. Okay. Well, we just found a straight up untapped land. So is that enough? Because these become trample. So they'll be plus three. So that's twelve. Minus 5 is 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Is that exactly 12? All right, well, let's find out. I mean, either way, they have to block with both of their remaining creatures. So we don't die to silly things next turn, no matter how it goes down. But I think that's going to be lethal anyway. Yep, that's going to do it. So this is an example where... Iconoclast worked out pretty well getting that extra damage in early, so we took a turn away from them. So, not bad. Now, admittedly, if we would have survived till this turn, with it being a Dwinan's Elite and us having, like, two extra bodies, then it would have been a similar result, but they would have also had, like, another, whatever that is, four, another eight life, potentially, and that could have been a bit different. So, who knows? But we'll take the win. That's a good one to start with. Okay. We are going to keep this. 
Man, I've never wanted them to make us discard a card so bad till we have Wilt Le Leech in hand. I'm like, oh, no discard here. Darn it. <laughs> that had potential, though. It was almost there. You know what? I'm willing to attack here. Like, I didn't think they wanted to just give up the one point for nothing, so that's fine. Whatever. Heartfire hero, sure. Now, we can instant speed remove something with Werefox Bodyguard, and that's good times. They could be a nuisance here and like, okay, they didn't want to be. I was like, they could have. We're going to put this on Elf. I'm going to go ahead and just play this duder here. Pass the turn. So now if they have removal, they need to spend it on Glissa first, since Glissa will first strike even something with Trample or whatever. Unless they just make it indestructible, then that's, you know, whatever. <laughs> like, we just got to deal with it, if that's the case. All right, they at least get a body when that dies, so that's worth something, right? Uh, Or we just take five? Yeah, sure, all right. Seems fine. Mm, I want to play the Elvish Druid, but I actually want to save this for more value, so let's do this first. You know what's funny? I'm going to take counters off of a card. Just keep that knucklehead small. How you like them apples, opponent? I am not going to allow that to happen. Hopefully that's not just another shock. <laughs> Remove that guy. Oh, the last card is a shock. Gosh dang it. Ah, uh, we tried. <laughs> we tried, y'all. I tried to give it my best effort. It wasn't there. If I'm the opponent, I'm flinging a scamp there. Honestly. Yeah, I would have flung the scamp to get the 1-1 one, one out of the way and just hit us for 7 or 8 there. Would have been better. Yeah, because now it's either goes to waste or... You can't, yeah, that was, that was a weird situation there. I think I'm just gonna play, wow, hmm. And they're top decking here. I'm gonna go here, because I feel like if we're going to come back, we need to be able to play multiple things. Oh, yeah, we're good now. Opponent tried to get me there with the, oh, your turn, whatever crap. Like, here we go. You brought this upon yourself, opponent. This is the pain for which you have wrought. Shouldn't be BMing people. Alright. Works for me. Uh, I will take one and draw a card here. That's, that's where you know you've really got it against Mono Red, where you're like, yeah, I'm just going to take a card. Whatever. Sure. I got a 6-6 six, six to block with. I don't care. Yep. There you go. Okay. We get to go first. Let's keep it. It's not a crazy fast hand by any stretch, but hopefully it can get us where we want to go. Now, we've drawn plenty of mana. I would like to draw some threats along the way here because I assume we're going to lose multiple creatures. I mean, we're going to be playing the Archdruid, which I'm assuming is just going to eat a bullet. So hopefully we find something good to play behind it. Bat would be painful. Not going to lie. All right. That doesn't really suck either. All right. I'm just attacking here first. I'm giving up a point, but I'm kind of hoping they use a removal spell on it, which they did. Unfortunately, well, I guess it was fine. It was a go for the throat. All right. If this dies, at least let me draw a Wilt Leaf Liege next turn. <laughs> you know? Like, let me draw something good. There is a Glissa. I'm going to go ahead and play this, our Glissa. And I'm just going to incubate twice. 
Now, we're not blocking, unfortunately. So it kind of just is what it is. But if we could find one of our one-mana elves... Actually, maybe even a two-mana elf? One, two... Actually, it's... Yeah, two or three would work. And we'd still be able to play Banner of Kinship, which would be pretty sweet. Though now I kind of want to kill that. Oh, they're just not attacking. All right, fair enough. This also works. Let's play this, and that'll give us one, two, three, four, five. Yep, that'll work. Then we'll play this Banner of Kinship. Call Elf. We're going to incubate twice. And no attack. All right. So they may want to kill that now. Maybe we work them into doing certain things on their turn. I don't know. We'll see. Worst case scenario, we just activate a bunch of two twos with double strike or whatever. <laughs> Is it double strike? Yeah. All right. And death touch. Or first strike and death touch. Well, that's a fun way to steal a win against Golgari. Just glisses and pairs do the job. <laughs> we'll take that. But again, this is like Banner of Kinship. Everybody's sleeping on it because it feels like everybody thinks it has to get to like five or whatever. Most of the time, this is probably going to be two or three for us. And look how big it made our board, right? That's enough. If that Glissa wasn't even in the way, we would have attacked for seven on top of having all this other stuff. And if you look at our draw, we only drew four threats. And that was good enough. So, yeah, so far so good. All right, we're going to keep this. It theoretically looks like it checks the boxes. What are we up against? All right, well, that doesn't tell us much. That could be token control stuff, or it could just be a life gain deck. <laughs> or anything in between. Could be angels, honestly. Do have an angel deck we're working on, but uh, haven't gotten around to it just yet. I guess we just play what we can play here and we attack for two. Alright, question's gonna be are they playing sweepers to go with their tokens? Are they a like proliferate poison deck? Like there's a gonna be a lot of unknown things here. Alright, sheltered by ghosts. Fair enough. Good thing I was not overly concerned about that particular card. I feel like this might be some type of proliferate control sort of thing. So let's uh, buckle up here. I don't think I need to show them Cavern of Souls yet. We can save that for later. Let's just put this on Elf. Play one of these. And I'm willing to attack because, like, they can't block. <laughs> like, the worst part is, though, I kind of wish they could so that we could get that off of there, but eh, it's whatever. Problem is, if they are playing counters, uh, they get to return a creature. Yeah, makes sense. Um, would we be able to sneak through the banner of kinship is the problem. I don't know that we could. Ooh, an ethereal armor. All right. Well, now we need to find one of our things that kills a creature or an enchantment. Either way would be nice. But currently, we'll have to work on that. All right. I think we're just going to put this on elf. Play this again. Still aren't doing much here. Oh, they had a virtual loyalty on top of it. That's brutal. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see if we can find one of our reclamation sages. Because that would be real good right about now. I mean, opponent drew very well here, too, though. Oh, and they drew an ossification. Yeah. All right. That's it. GG's. <laughs> like, I guess technically we could draw a get loss, and I guess we're not dead. All right. We didn't, though. Yeah, we drew none of our removal or anything. We really didn't have a chance here. Good job, though. Opponent drew well. What you gonna do? Oh, boy. Eesh. 
all right, we're going to try it. Maybe we draw an untapped land. I don't know. Maybe we'll get one of our multicolor lands. Maybe we'll play Glissa on two. We can sit on uh, the Archdruid. Actually, I say that. I think I'd still cast Archdruid and then just play Glissa behind it. While Archdruid is strong, Glissa is still a damn good magic card. But let's see what happens. Ugh. Hmm. I guess we're going here. Mostly because Glissa is too valuable here. So if they go ahead and just like shelter by ghosts, we're fine. We don't want them to shelter by ghosts on a Glissa, obviously. But it was just an ossification this time. Which I would assume, if it were an actual sheltered by ghost, they would have just gone ahead and done it. So this creates an interesting dynamic for this turn. Hmm. I think I'm just going to attack here. In turn, knowing that I can just get rid of that and then get it back because of get loss. Oh, no, we can't. I have the wrong land. That came into play tapped. Oh, no. I should have just played Glissa that turn. Or the Archdruid. I wasn't thinking. I had the wrong lands untapped. Oh, man. We might lose this. That's a bad, bad turn. I should have played either of these there. Yeah, that's atrocious, honestly. That's just from not paying attention. What is that guy? Oh, you scry when you play an enchantment. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. You got a bunch of tutus. What's the other side of this? Uh, put a plus one kind on each of up to two dark creatures. All right, that's fair. Uh, yeah, we just pass here. Man, this is going to be a weird sequence of stuff that's got to go down here. Alright, I'm going to start by getting rid of this. Obviously, they can respond. Which they will. Yep, that makes sense. I almost didn't block at all, but I figured we got to make them play the cards if they have them, you know? All right. Can we get an untapped land here? Ooh, that's a good card for them. Oh my gosh. And an Imperial Armor? That's brutal. Yep, we need an untapped land and did not get it. Damn, that's tough. Because now we can play this, but I can't play the Ethereal Armor. I mean, the Get Lost. I can do this to get rid of the token. And then I could just chump block with this, I guess. Wait. What happened to the, the rabbit that was on top? Oh, they scried it to the bottom. Hmm. I guess we got to do this then. Like, that's the only thing that kind of makes sense here. And at least buys us some time. While we figure things out. But we're much further behind than we need to be because I messed up on, on turn three. I kind of created this ugly hole that we're in, unfortunately. I'm going to go ahead and block, make them waste a card. Yeah, that's that's acceptable. The only concern we have right now is do they have a way to protect their creature? 
Okay. They did not. Oh, because they probably already had a Regal Bunny Corn. That explains some things. Okay. We might have worked our way into a reasonable situation here. Oh, Tybar, you're really good too, actually. It's kind of stellar. Um, all right, let's tap this for two green and a black. And then I think we just play Glissa here. Can't pay for the extra card as much as we would like to. And then I think we go ahead and just kill this guy right now. And then, you know, if you have an answer, it's on you to find one here, opponent. Now, they could just as well give it flying or something, and we just die anyway, but, you know. If they do, they do. Just tough life for us. All right, Spellbook Bender, we're not afraid of. Oh. This is exciting. I think, though, we do this... First, hmm, I'm going to attack with Glissa. We'll just see what happens. All right, I'm going to destroy. I mean, the thing is, is there a difference between us being at four and being at five? I don't think there is. So I'm just going to draw a card. Like, it just felt like there wasn't that big of a difference. So I think here what we're going to do is we're going to tap... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's untap, actually. Because I can play this. Oh, we don't have quite enough. I was thinking... Well, hmm. Tyvar is a thing. I think we're just going to go here. And then uh, we get to punish an opponent for the Yorgo crap. Here we go. Elf. Do what you're going to do this turn, opponent. We know what your top card is. Yep. Yep, you got it. Sure. Did not get the removal card we wanted. So, we attack for 15. Eh, we play this guy. We'll draw a card. Oh, you are a turn late, I bet. Gosh, dang it. That does hurt quite a bit. Alright, I guess that's all we can do. I mean, if they have a thing to give something flying, then, you know, it is what it is. Um, I guess we draw a card. Like, not much is going to come from that either way. But opponent dies regardless. Woo! No clue what they scried to the top. The only thing I can think of is it maybe was a uh, sheltered by ghost or something. But even then, it probably would have still been worth doing. So, I don't know. They left something on top, but ended up not mattering. But this is a big deal, considering... That deck's already kind of hard to beat, and I messed up bad on turn three, and somehow we still recovered. So that's actually pretty nice. Ooh, this is a weird-looking hand. All right, we'll try. Oh, boy. Can we race this deck? Let's find out. I mean, we get to go Visionary. Man, why were you not a Cavern of Souls? And why did we draw a Reclamation Sage this game? Dang it. This isn't the game where we want that. I mean, this is obviously getting countered, right? Oh, I guess not. Wow. I thought they would have countered it if they were able to. All right. They're going to put stuff in the yard that they're going to reanimate next turn? I bet they are. Yep. If it's just... Well, it wasn't anything, actually. I was going to say, it was just the uh, Haughty Jin. Probably would have been okay. Okay. Picklock Prankster. 
just trying to do the work all by his lonesome, huh? I think here we just go visionary, not paying. I think this is a get all the damage in where we can situation. Decline and we're just attacking. Just saying, we, we're just going to get it where we can get it. <laughs> like, force you to do something here. All right, they're at 17. We have exactly lethal if they do nothing to any of our creatures here. Yeah, there's nothing to get. Yeah, you have a prankster. Works for me. Um, yeah. Not paying. And attacking. <laughs> like, here we go. This is the ugliest board we've made so far, but you know what? We probably could have even battled if they would have got the right cards, because we'd have glistened and made a bunch of dudes. So, yeah, we'll take it. All right, let's keep it. We're on the draw, so this is not going to be as good as it could be, obviously. This makes me feel... Man, I don't even know. Like, part of me is like, you kind of wish it was just some life gain stuff, so you could build up and have a big banner of kinship, but I don't know. Could still be bad. It's definitely not that. High noon. Hmm. That's tough. We're going to need our creature lands this fight. I mean, I can always get rid of that later, but... Huh. We're going to assume there's some variants of Sunfalls and whatever. Let's go ahead and attack. See what the opponent does here. Excellent. We can live with that. Put this on Elf. That actually will help a lot. All right. Now, they could just have a lot of not on my watch and things like that. So, you know, if they do, they do. We'll just have to learn to live with it. Do we try for Banner of Kinship here? Hmm. I feel like I'm just going to do this first. And then try to attack. Ooh, they didn't have it. Wow. All right. Let's uh, destroy this. Not to say they don't have another one, but... I almost wanted to tie bar because they had, like, Day of Judgment here. That kind of sucks. But I was torn between, like... Do well, didn't even matter. Okay. It was probably a case, if I were guessing, where they kept some number of counters. But with us having the Cavernous Souls... We just probably deadened at least three or four cards in their hand. Okay. I mean, we need to find some threats, but I, <laughs> I'm down. Do our land or elves live? That is the question. You could just play a tap land here, opponent. We'd be excited by that. They don't care what we're excited by. Oh, they're playing proliferate. Yeesh. All right. Well, let's see what's up. Alright, I mean, if they're using all that here, then I guess it's okay. Mono black. They must be waiting for their blue cards. There's no way you're playing mono black proliferate. Yeah, there's some blue mana. Alright, they didn't have one for this. Or maybe they do. Nope, we will draw a card for sure. That is not a bad option. Hopefully it's not just something that deals minus two. <laughs> Probably is, though. It also gives our hand away, because we would have played that pre-combat if that was even an option, obviously. Gonna kill Glissa here. 
I mean, the good news is they're using all this removal that can put counters on us, but they are not proliferating so far. So that's kind of okay. I think we just go for it. If they have a sweeper, then, like, so be it. But we just got to do what we can. Oh, no. Well, we can't really protect against that because that just gets indestructible, not uh, hexproof. So, yeah, that goes away. Fortunately, that's the only one we're playing. Come on. We need something that pumps. We need how oh, Banner of Kinship would be cool. Like, we have a lot of good cards we can draw. And sadly, I think these are going to be close to dead in this fight. They were playing the spell-heavy version, not the creature-heavy version. So we just need to get the damage that we can get. That is not helping our cause any, sadly. Hell, even one of our creature lands would be acceptable here. Well, preferably the green-white one, but... Well, that's all we have left, actually. Gonna kill another creature. I mean, it's also a little bit of a weird thing, because they know we're holding to get lost, so if they play something, we're gonna try to kill it. Keep attacking. So I don't know. Their land actually doesn't do much here. I mean, you still activate it, make us spin the card, you know? And if they pay to counter it, then... Yeah, their land's tapped. So, oh, we can just pay for it anyway. Yeah, sure. I <laughs> mean, like, alright. That worked out. Sack a creature, huh? Well, I guess it's got to be this. We finally got a poison counter on us on, like, whatever it is. Turn 7, 8 plus. Oh, and then they had to drown an Iker. All right. Well, they're down to one card. There's... Okay. That's something. Question is, can we find enough threats to keep things going? That's not a bad one. If they kill that, we'll flash this in. All right, didn't have to. Excellent. Okay, we will try again. Move to attack. Mm, that's a little fishy. I'm going to go no attack. They obviously wanted to target it. So I'm going to leave this up so I can flash this in and have potentially lethal next turn. They were obviously looking to do something. Just want to kill it? Snare it. Alright, that's fine. Like I said, something just wasn't sitting right. Okay, now we'll attack. If I thought it was just snare, though, I would have went ahead and attacked anyway and just maybe replay the land or something. Oh, wait, Snare has to be non-land. Oh, so it wouldn't even have mattered anyway. So, yeah, if it would have been Snare, then whatever. But I think they're dead here anyway. Not true. They could draw, poison us, and maybe find something. Didn't matter anyway, though. Well, you know, we ranked up, and I think I'm going to end that there. Let's do a wrap-up and see how we feel about this. Okay, so... We did get to see at least every card come into play, so that was good. You don't always get that in a video, and then we get people at the end that's like, well, I don't know why you played this card, it didn't even matter. Like, sometimes you're only looking at, like, you know, six or eight games or whatever. It's like, we can't always choose what we draw. Now, an interesting thing here is I think between Glissa and the Get Lost, we have a fair amount of ways to deal with artifacts, or enchantments at least. Not necessarily artifacts. So... Here's what I'm going to recommend. I think if we still think you need to deal with a lot of artifacts, though we're not seeing a ton, it's still mostly enchantments. But if it changes to that, go ahead and keep both Reclamation Sages. However, I think the situation being what it is, I'm going to change this one of the Sages for a Tyvar. I want to have more of these because I think just being able to survive damage, there are people starting to play more um, Day of Judgment, and split up, and this actually can outlive those. 
also it's just another way to win, right? If you have this and Archdruid or even that and just one thing pumping your team plus some lands, like everything's plus four. Or in the weird situations where you only have a banner kinship at two and then you use his ability, everybody's getting plus five, right? So that's still a thing. So I think just the versatility of Tybar makes it a better inclusion there. But all the other cards really do matter. And Banner and Kinship isn't terrible. Again, if you don't like it and you want to not play it, go ahead and play another Reclamation Sage, play another Werefox Bodyguard. I think those are both more than acceptable cards to play. Very reasonable, very good, and they're lower cost. Go for it. But we're having some funs. We're playing Banner and Kinship. Now, the weird part is, this deck did do, like, 80% win percentage. So, could have gotten lucky, not gonna lie. But we did pretty well against the aggro decks. We, I think one of our control opponents got a little bit of a weird draw, but we also got Cavernous Souls, so I don't know how you feel about that game. Take it for what it is. But overall, this worked. I do think there's still a version of Elves where you can play and just play all of the things that pump your team. So you go heavy on Visionary, the... Uh, the three mana one that you can make a creature with, you play the Arch Druid, you play the Guilt Leaf Liege, and then you just fill in with removal the rest of the way, right? And then you just go boom, 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 right? Maybe Wear Fox Bodyguard or something. And then just every creature's a monster, and that's good enough. So we'll probably work on that down the road. But right now, with the way the metagame is, I feel like this is bringing enough to the table that we have something for every matchup. Now, admittedly, you can still fall behind in some things, and if your opponent gets an early start... But even the Werefox Bodyguard is really good at resetting plus one, plus one counters on things, taking enchantments off of stuff. Like, you have a lot of flexibility here, which I really like. But if you want this list, here's what the final version's gonna be. Four Sentinel Stalwart, four Lana War Elves, three Get Lost, four Leaf Crown Visionary, four Yabamai Iconoclast, three Werefox Bodyguard, four Elvish Archdruid, one Reclamation Sage, two Tyvar the Pummeler, two Glissa Sunslayer, three Wilt, two Wilt Leaf Leech, sorry, Two Glissa Herald of Predation, two Banner of Kinship, four Forest, three Hushwood Verge, four Razor Verge Thicket, four Restless Prairie, four Cavern Souls, four Secluded Courtyard. Yeah, this one was a blast, and we were having a good time with this, especially with Foundations just opening up the doors even more for more decks. But if you want to see a really sweet dragon deck that we played yesterday, especially because of a very key new card out of Foundations, check out the next video. But that's all I have you for now. We'll see you next time.